Welcome back. Now, Uganda's post-independence history has been interspersed with conflict, bloodshed, and military coups. But efforts towards truth and reconciliation largely appear selective in choosing the victims and perpetrators. Now, on talk of the nation tonight is Jafar Amin, son to former president Idi Amin Dada, an exponent of truth and reconciliation. Jaffa, thank you for joining us. Thank you. I'm, I'm humbled to be here. I'll, I'll get right into the discussion. In an interview with the Observer newspaper, you said that Africans are vindictive and retributive. But the same African culture has some sort of, some form of reconciliation and reparation justice mechanism. What is the premise of your claim? You know, we, we, we're a patriarch society and we believe in uh, showing strength. Africans tend to believe the more you show strength, the more honored and respected you are. So throughout history, even going back to biblical times or Quranic times, and even if you go through the oral history of Africans, you find a, a very strong patriarch character, whether it's Moses, Muhammad, all strong men like uh, Shaka Zulu, mm -hmm. there's always that impetus that you show strength by, by being firm. So that has actually collectively been the, the norm in Africans and uh, the revenge factor tends to be there very strongly whenever somebody feels that one tribe has attacked them. So the ethnicity problem uh, tended to dwell on all African, or even post-independence post Africa. So uh, that vindiction comes out in tribal wars and the sectarian uh, religious wars that we've seen that actually from the inception of Uganda. And it's, though, it's that premise that gave me the, the fact that, look, at what point would somebody be courageous enough to say sorry? And for me, that's, that's the defining factor. Because and and we'll, we'll get to the issue of saying mm. sorry a little mm. later on. Mm. You have on several occasions come out to dispute mm. accounts about your father, Idi Amin's chronicled atrocious, if I may say, mm. history. Mm. Is this a son's defense of his father, or do you actually have evidence contrary to what is written in history? Or can we even believe what history says about your father? You see, history tends to be written by the victor and that has always happened in history. But they're defining factors about my father based on issues of being a mass murderer, uh, issues of cannibalism, issues of insanity. I'd pick on those three. Let's start with the insanity issue. He was strong enough to say straight to the Israelites, what you're doing against the Palestinians is wrong and he spoke it in a, in, a, in, a, in a tragic term when he referred to the six million Jews that were incinerated. The reaction against that was, that was an insane statement. Considering? Considering the, the facts that happened in the history of... Uh, the second one was the issue of cannibalism. It dwelled on a brother of mine called Moses. Now, Moses is alive. He was born in 1969. He lives a very quiet life. He doesn't want to talk, but uh, he's still alive. But an incredible thing happened uh, just at the moment when they claimed he had been sacrificed. sacrificed. The information arrived that he had been sacrificed, and there was a funeral gathering in Busembatia, where his mother comes from, from the royal clan of the Vaisemina. Okay. Dad collected the son and the sisters, and they drove all the way to Busembatia, and they found a funeral fire with the mournful gathering of his relatives from the maternal side. That must have shocked him. It shocked the parents, not the young boy. He was, he was a small boy. But the grandfather sees a spitting image of his great-great-grandfather, great-grandfather, uh, and... They checked, they checked. You, you know how the children have injuries mm -hmm. that are uh, very well known by, let's say, the nanny. There was one called, uh, 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 one, one, one lady 
who knew the child so well. She came and checked for those discerning scars and said, no, but this is Moses. From moanfulness, they turned to ululations of happiness. That's a clear, to date, to, to, to date everybody still believes that Moses is, is, dead. Was, was basically eaten. The horror of that thought, that he's alive. The issue of uh, mass murder, there was selective uh, information coming from uh, the, the people he had ousted. ousted. Okay. Unfortunately, uh, UPC to date still considers that the country was betrothed to them. I'm just giving a, a political angle. Yeah. So that animosity also meant that throughout his reign there was also negative information going out. Now, uh, an important factor to that is a gentleman called, uh, 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 he, he's, he's in the Macquarie University, and he, he actually does research, Fred Guedico. His okay. father was a victim during my father's time. But to date, everybody believes that my father killed his father. But he has come out and said, I've checked through information, and it's actually about 10,800 deaths not the purported 300,000 or 500. To, even today, some people are claiming a million. So those three factors are there. But I'm not defensive. I simply say something went wrong. And I have the courage and conviction to come out and say and go out and meet victims of repression, of absolute power. My father was the only person to date who actually wielded absolute power. And that means a lot. It means you have a soft underbelly. They can blame you for everything. Anything and everything. And he was ruling. Uh, uh, it was a, it was a mil it was martial law, the equivalent of what happened in Japan post uh, 1945. Same thing with the Germany, Uganda. It seems the pains of of, of democracy or or a new nation you go through. But I'm not condoning what happened. I'm simply saying, if you rule by military law, it means you open yourself up to, to a, lot of, uh, a lot of accusations. You recently asked for your family to be forgiven, as the family of Idi Amin. Mm -hmm. Why now? Or is this something that you have sort of been trying to do and you didn't quite have the... I, I got actually the inspiration in two ways. My brother, Major General Taban, was a head of uh, about 6,000 fighting group, the West Nile Bank Front in Congo and Sudan. When his father died, he left 22 tons of weapons and came home. I was absolutely furious at an individual level. Uh, I kept asking, we went to the Nile, we, we used to call Nile Hotel, Nile Mansions. Yeah. And I simply said, why? He said, there's nothing to fight for. Dad is dead. I went back to the office. I was still angry. I was, I was, a, I was an administrator in a, in, a, in a courier company. But it, I started reflecting on that point. The second point was when his grandfather, actually Taban Amin is the, is the grandson of Obote. That's yeah. the most iron ironic <laughs> thing about this. Helen Echi was a, a niece to Obote. So I went all the way to Okokoro to bury the father of the nation. When I got there, they read my name because I'd signed the visitor's book, yeah. the condolence book, and they said, in the interest of reconciliation, we wish to well, uh, recognize the presence of the son of Idi Amin. There was an incredible ululation. When, when ululation is negative or, or uh, let's say, dangerous, it comes in a, in a in very a chilling way. manner. Yeah. But, the ululation of welcome is incredible. There were probably 100,000 mourners that day. That set me off thinking about it. And, uh, and then we did an amazing thing with the BBC for two, two weeks. It was a radio documentary. I went all the way from Koboko to Butiama, and we, we did an incredible reconciliation with the family of Nyerere. So that set me off. And I've been constantly doing this. Right now, I go around uh, regionally with okay. the Jubilee Network. In fact, it was actually sanctioned when Museveni stood at Namboli 
and said sorry for the past misdeeds of former leaders. You know, every position in society, well, from a, from a local chief to the head of state, you wield amazing power and influence in your status. And we go around saying sorry. In some areas, I, uh, I stand in front of 30,000 people. Then you get about 40 families coming with all the tears. It's an, it's that an amazing... That must be very emotional for it's, you. It's incredible. Sometimes people ask me, why do you do it? In Islam, there's a saying called, Waladun Saleh, Ayyadullah. A son, a good son, stands and upholds the name of the family or the parents. And if you go to the Christian side, they say, honor your parents. It's, it's one of the commandments, commandments yes, I believe. Yes. So that's basically what I'm doing. But I believe through the uh, religious, interreligious council, we can heal a lot of the wounds of this country because believe you me, religious people are the most respected and trusted people in this oh, country. I totally, I totally <laughs> agree. A lot of negative stories are told about your father. Mm. What are some of the positive things that you can tell us about your father's regime? I can only pin one thing. It has a, it has a negative connotation to it. It's called economic independence. Africans are incredibly, we have an incredibly low self-esteem, but it was, it was primarily put in us during the colonial and the slave process. You dehumanize an individual, you, 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 you break the will of an individual. That's what colonialism did to us. And it seems the only thing my father's purpose in life was, was to come and unshackle those chains. And, and, uh, and, and, and remove the yoke. Can you, you see those oxes yeah. th doing the plowing? Can you imagine a human being? That, that's, the, that's how the whole of Africa has lived. And he's harangued for it and he's talked of negatively about, but that's the only thing I want you to focus on. He's, he had the courage and conviction to say, you are capable, this is your country. And he actually paid compensation for what he's claimed to have plundered. Okay. Hmm? They claim he plundered from the, the 50,000 British Asians who owned 90% of uh, commerce and industry, but he actually went through placing it under the custodian board and he actually went through a process of paying okay. appro approximately a billion dollars. But nobody talks about that. Just very quickly, mm -hmm. what is the one thing you remember most about your childhood? Wow, there's a kaleidoscope. I've, I've, I've actually bothered to write a book, and I, it was published in, the, uh, in 2010, but uh, the love. My, my father was a very mothering individual. The only example of him is Obama. You know, children who have lived with their mothers have an incredibly sensitive uh, persona around the, their children or progeny. Today I find negatives talked about him, but right then there was the caring and the mothering, the, the love. He was strict, but it was very strict. As any father should, yeah, he is expected to be. You know, he used silence with children. He was not the bowler, he was, he was not the, he was a quiet type. He had a quiet brooding presence. But that love, despite the fact that we are 60 children, he had enough love to go around. Yes, yes. Uh, but I think he was reflecting on his childhood. On his own childhood. Yeah. Your last words. I would really want, I had wanted to read out a statement, but uh, would, it, would, it, would it be? Sure, just, yeah? just quickly one minute. You can read mm? out just All one. right, please. It, because it's, we're heading towards our Ramadan, and this is something I really felt I, I really wanted to do. Sure. Thank, Thank you. you. In the name of God, the most gracious, most merciful, Fellow citizens of our beloved country, Uganda, I humbly take this moment of reflection to bring to your attention the following highlights in our history. Our father of the nation, His Excellency Milton Obote, was forgiven. He was given an honorable burial in Uganda. Honorable Wakasisi was pardoned. Honorable Agre Awori of the Foba was forgiven. Colonel Omari of UPA Teso reconciled with the NRM government. 
Honorable Musa Echweru of UPA was captured red-handed, but however was forgiven. Today he is a minister. LRA officers of the Konyi have and were forgiven by African justice mechanism, where cultural, religious, and religious leaders through our Aumatoput ceremony were prepared to forgive even Konyi if the Juba peace talks agreement was signed. If we look back, Idi Amin Alemi Dada for 24 years between 1979 and 2003 lived a simple, quiet life in Saudi Arabia. He actually never participated in armed conflict post-1979. He died a humble pauper and was buried in an unmarked grave in our simple Islamic cultural way. I hereby plead as one of the sons and children of the third head of state of Uganda. Our humble plea is for his soul to rest in eternal peace. We have no political ambitions so far, and we all want to live a humble and peaceful life in our beloved homeland, Uganda. We salute the president of Uganda for having ushered in peace and political stability over the past 29 years, so that all Ugandans are free to enjoy in pursuit of happiness. In keeping with this spirit of peace and reconciliation for a new and better Uganda, I, Jafar Remo Amin Dada, appeal for forgiveness from all citizens of Uganda for the soul and spirit of my late father, Al Haji Idi Amin Alemi Dada, and seek goodwill from every Ugandan and in the same spirit of reconciliation to God. I wish, as we head into the holy month of Ramadan, to appeal to His Excellency, our President, Yoerika Guta Museveni, and the NRM government to unclench our fists for an open hand of peace and forgiveness, because reconciliation and tolerance is the cornerstone of the President, of President Yoerika Museveni's government and leadership over the, the past 29 years. I say all this with sincerity for God and my country. And I'm very humbled that you've given me the chance to at least reiterate what I've been doing all across the country. Thank you very much. And I'll continue and I ask others to join us. Thank you very much. Yes, Jaffa Ramin, talking truth, peace, and reconciliation. We will take a short break and return with the latest in NTV Week in Sport. Thank you for joining us. to you by Double Mint.